Merry Christmas. Oh, look at this hero wave. Oh my gosh. Dude, that was a bomb. December 30th here in Cape Hatteras, it's calm out, the ocean is quiet, and that's because on December 25th, Christmas Day, the Atlantic went wild and we got one of our craziest south swells in years. What's up y'all, welcome back to another episode. Although it's a little different because I didn't document anything because the whole swell happened on Christmas day, one of a handful of days that I'm not gonna document stuff. But I did get out there for an hour in between family time and cooking a brisket on the Traeger and it was crazy. I mean, it was straight up throttling. I'm talking, it was eight to 10 feet probably plus in the morning, I wasn't there to see it, and just throttling, grinding perfection. We have been plagued for the last five or six years with getting a lot of south swells that underperform, and this one performed perfectly. The only problem was it hit on Christmas Day, which is one of a handful of days in the whole year that I will not dedicate to surfing all day. So as exciting as it was, it was also hard to not get to seize the opportunity that we had in this crazy south swell. But I did get out there for one hour, one wild hour with the boys. Uh, Cam Richards and Dana Quinn and Dylan Mincher had surfed before I got there. They were doing their second or third drift when I showed up. And I'll just let this little edit of Jeffrey O'Neill's footage play out before I tell you guys the rest. It was sick. Christmas swell. Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And one crazy wipeout. Time to get back home to the family. Oh, Merry Christmas, boys. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I got two. I could have got none.
It's so square. It's like step off. Yeah. Well, there you have it. I will say, as I went through the footage, I noticed that as this day went on, while it was still perfect, it wasn't quite as wild as when I showed up. <laughs> I only filmed the end of it. I took a photo at the beginning and then took a video at the end. Oh my gosh, bonus section. Oh, there's a corner. Oh, oh, it's still going. No, here's a roll in. Oh my gosh. My very first like glance at it, it was still pretty low tide and it was crazy. And I believe on my first drift, or maybe the drift before I got there, uh, Cam Richards was out and claimed he got one of the best waves of his life. And that's a heavy claim coming from a dude who will literally be like, yeah, I got like a one. I got, a, it was okay. I didn't really get anything crazy. And then you see the clips and you're like, dude, you got psycho waves. Whether it's at the lighthouse or at pipeline, the guy always underplays his waves. So for him to claim that he got one of the waves of his life, he said it was just a bomb, like throttling, so perfect, really heavy down the beach, just running. And as he's going, he like didn't think he was gonna make it. The foam ball hit him and like kicked his tail up to where he was super inverted and they said it spit him at like 30 miles an hour just flying out the tube. That's insane for someone like him to claim that. And uh, stoked for him, pretty much all the boys got good waves. He was saying right before I got there is when it was really turning on. And then maybe like 45 minutes after I left, it kind of just changed. It was still really good, but it wasn't that big and wild good. And that crazy below sea level perfection that it had been. So. I can't believe I happened to be there for like part of the best part of the day. That was special. I literally did my first drift before Jeffrey O'Neill was there. He was driving down from doing Christmas morning with his family. I did my first drift, first wave, one of my scariest wipeouts here in years. I mean, air dropped on a bomb, went sideways, fins caught, fell backwards, went over the falls, upside down and backwards like this so scared and i actually didn't get pounded that bad but the thought of hitting my board or bottom in the position i was in was so terrifying and uh i think if i would have made it it was like my wave of the winter it was a crazy wave but took donuts got one more cover up and then came in and was looked at my watch and realized i had 30 minutes or 35 minutes until i needed to be in my truck going home sprinted like a mile up the beach and jeffrey showed up as i was running up I paddle out, got a decent cover up on my first one. I just was like, I need to make a wave. Like it's so perfect. Don't try and pick the best wave, just make a wave. So I made my first one and then missed a set I was too deep for. And then my second wave came and I looked at it and it wasn't a bomb, but I was like, if I'm, a, if I'm greedy and I don't just go on this perfect looking wave, like I might wait for a set and it's not good. And then I'm gonna have to go in and go home. Cash Barris was looking, he's like, you going? I was like, man, I just need to not be greedy and just take this and go to my truck and get home <laughs> and got a sick one. So I was stoked. Literally coming in, checking my watch with the time, got home to check the brisket that I'd been cooking for our whole family for the day, evening for dinner and perfect timing. I pulled it off 20 minutes later. So it is a great thing I didn't be selfish and stay out there any longer than I did. Yeah, that was just magical to see that happen. And then there was even some waves the next morning got out there with Jason Forrest and Hunter Hicks and just surf some chest high fun tubes at dawn before it was over. Yeah. Can you get out before this set?
And now we're just gonna have to wait for that day to happen again on one of the handful of days that I won't dedicate to surfing all day. Oh my gosh, it was just so good to see a South Swell doing what that one was. And that's how it used to be. I, when I was growing up in the early 20s, when we got a South Swell, it was just throttling down the beach. I mean, per perfect looking. But for the last handful of years, it just hasn't been doing that in true fashion. And so maybe it'll start doing that again. I don't know. Maybe it was just a random swell that was everything was right. Time will tell. Coming here to the end of 2020, I'm not gonna do some sort of wrap up right now. But uh, yeah, stay tuned, because who knows what's gonna happen this week. Our forecasts are just all over the place. One minute it looks terrible, the next minute it looks firing. So who knows what we'll get this week. But if you haven't been, be sure to hit subscribe so that you don't miss out on these weekly episodes coming up. The rest of y'all know the deal. Appreciate all the support, you guys. I'll see y'all next week.